I was walking to a place between beautiful tall trees where I saw a circle of chairs. Some people were sitting down already and some chairs were empty. I chose a chair, sat down and waited together with the others, not really knowing what to expect. I was a bit nervous because I didn't know anyone. You are so welcome here under the baobab tree. My name is Ama and I'm your host, as we like to say it so beautifully. In this podcast, we explore everything about personal and spiritual growth. See it as a moment where you and I are literally sitting under the baobab tree with a cup of tea, whether you're driving, walking on the way somewhere, doing the dishes or just consciously sitting somewhere. We are here together. You can find more about me and how you can work with me at amaboache.com. I will put a link in the show notes so you can click on there. And today's episode is about deep listening. And as I said, I was sitting nervously on a chair. <laughs> and I had come with a friend to a retreat in Plum Village in France. Tina Tan's Zen Buddhist place, maybe you know it. And every day we would meet with a group of people, kind of a little family, compared to the 500 people who were present in total at Plum Village at that time. So my friend was in, in another kind of family. Every day we sat down to eat dinner together and to have a sharing circle. One of the monks guided the circle. And in Plum Village, there is the philosophy of deep listening and to speak from your heart both in a compassionate way. And that's what we practiced in these circles. We were at 15 to 20 people in a circle, if I remember correctly. And I didn't know anyone. Yet at the end of the retreat, I felt closer to some of these people than to some of my own friends. Why was that? The only reason I can come up with is because of this compassionate listening and people opened up to one another and were vulnerable. Of course, I know sometimes it's easier to tell your story to people who don't know you and with whom you separate ways again. But that wasn't it. These sharing circles were healing. Something magical happened there. Imagine sharing something from your heart and around 20 people just listening, giving you space, giving you time for whatever it is that needs to be shared. No advice, no judgment, no words in return, but love and presence. I mean, imagine even sharing with one person who so deeply listens. It's scary to share But when you know you will be listened to in a non-judgmental way, it is less scary. It opens your heart. You know, I see many of us shouting, but not being heard. As if raising your voice is going to help. I see many of us sharing, but not feeling understood. I see conflicts happening. This is the truth. No, this is the truth. No, no, this is the truth. You're not right. This is right. I see many of us being surrounded by people, but feeling alone. Yeah, and I want to pause here. Because it could be different. And we could start with ourselves instead of trying to shake the other person to listen to you and to understand you. <laughs> The reason we are sometimes not good in listening is because we are busy with ourselves, basically. In a way, it's normal. I mean, we live our own lives, we have our own perspectives and worldview, we wear our own glasses, we have our own things to do. We may feel there is no time to listen, but I feel we've forgotten how to truly listen. I feel we've forgotten how healing it is for the other to truly listen. I know we often mean well in conversation with others. We truly want to be there for someone else. 
But are we really listening? I feel it's something we need to practice. I often forget to listen in this way too. But once you are aware of it, you can consciously choose differently. And I think it's good to be aware of the benefits of deep listening because then it's also easier to choose for it. So, as I said, it's very healing, but it also avoids conflict, creates connection and understanding. And also you learn more <laughs> because when you really listen, you try to set aside your own thing. I know sometimes it may feel too draining as if it takes too much energy to listen, energy you don't have maybe. And of course, it's also important to set boundaries in a loving way, if that's the case. But we can try our best where we are. I've also heard before that some people don't ask questions or are scared to listen because of what they will hear. In that case, it's good to deal with that fear. What exactly are you scared of? Also, you don't need to have an answer or solution ready. Often when we listen to other people, we want to take away their pain by helping or fixing or solving a problem or giving advice. But what if 90% of the time, the other person just wants a listening ear? What if healing happens within that space? Mindfully being present and listening. We all know how to do it. It just takes practice. <laughs> so, how can you listen in a deep and compassionate way? You may wonder. And I'm going to share some things here with you that I came up with or what, that I think about. As I said before, it takes some training and awareness. Observing yourself, how you listen to people right now, can give you some insights. You can think about ways how you can change the way you listen if it isn't truly listening yet. Of course, we can go into conversations with the best intentions and try our best to listen. But if we are dealing with our own pain, frustration, anger or fear, it's not always easy to listen. This is why it's essential to get to know your emotions and triggers to work through them. And I don't know if you already listened to two episodes that I made, but I have two episodes that are really amazing around this topic or for this topic. The first episode is Your Inner Child Wants to Meet You. It's basically about inner child work. It's episode two. And the other one is Triggers Are Your Teachers, episode eight on this Under the Baobab Tree podcast. Yeah, go and check it out. They're, they're interesting if you want to go deeper into knowing your own emotions and triggers. There are interesting episodes that can help you with this. And just breathing through emotions when they come up can already be tremendously helpful. Yeah, so observing yourself, working through your own pain and anger, but also mindfulness, being present in the here And now, presence is an energy that is really felt. People feel if you are busy with something else in your head, if you are thinking about the dishes and your kids and that thing you can't forget for work. If you are not truly present, you cannot listen deeply. So consciously bringing your awareness to the other person and maybe saying in your mind, I'm here now. I'm here to listen to you. That can help a lot. Another thing that can help is showing compassion. This is not the same as feeling sorry, like, oh, sorry, poor you. No, when you show compassion, your heart is open and you have love for that human being that is sitting in front of you. You want to understand. You want to be present and show love. I understand sometimes this is very difficult, But if you feel it's difficult, you can go back first to the emotions that are playing within you and give them space. What also helps is looking at the person in front of you and thinking about what they've been through in life and where they are coming from. You can even think that they also used to be a child. 
bringing our inner children to the forefront in conversations can be so beautiful and helpful. So yes, I believe if you even listen deeply once, just one time, you can change your life. It can even change the world if we all start practicing this more. And that's of course why I share this too with you today, because I'm here for changing the world, for letting unhealthy patterns and structures and dynamics dissolve and that we create something new together. And before I forget, I focused on deep listening with humans, noticing what's said and what's not said, because even what's not said, but what maybe the body shows is interesting too, right? But of course, deep listening isn't only something that has to do with humans. When is the last time you listened to the wind, the water, the spirits on your land? When is the last time you listened to your ancestors, to God? It's the same practice we cultivate towards them. They feel it when you truly listen and when you deeply listen to them. You may be surprised and nourished by what you hear. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you listened deeply. If you know someone who may enjoy this episode, it would be amazing if you could send the link to them. It makes me so happy when more people find this podcast, you know. And if you really love this podcast and want other people to find it easily too, or you want to give back in a way, it helps so much if you give five stars on Spotify or you leave a review on Apple Podcasts. And if you are interested in an aura reading or a Karishal reading, if you're searching for clarity, that are the spiritual readings that I'm offering. If you want to have a deep dive journey to transform your fears or insecurities, or if you want some intuitive coaching or really like someone who can mentor you in making your dreamer idea a reality, well, I'm here for you. <laughs> you can go to the show notes and click on the links there. My website is amaboachi.com, so A-M-A-B-O-A-K-Y-E.com. But in the show notes is the link. And yeah, I would love to work with you. I would love to see you, hear you, or meet you again under the baobab tree next time. Until the next, bye-bye. <laughs>